superscom.com. Uh, we're here with Burden C. Bell. This is Carlos Rally, and uh, I'm just going to bug you for, with a few questions. Fantastic. Uh, I know it's been a long day. Thank you so much for giving us your time. It's been, it's been a day. Yeah. <laughs> and you're probably going to be answering some of the usual questions as well. But hopefully, you know, uh, it's always for the fans. All good, man. So basically, uh, Obsolete was the, the band's first concept album. Back in full on concept. Yes, right, yeah. back in '98, it was basically you know Conception Five, Man vs Machine, all that, and now 2012 we have of course the upcoming second full concept album, The Industrialist. Um, yeah. So of course, can you take us a little bit into the concept of the album, the history, um, the influence, pretty much of uh, any any literary influence for you for writing this concept album or any other media influence as well. Um, wow, there's, there's, there's a lot to take in right there. Um, well, the title of this record is called The Industrialist. Um, the, uh, of course, it goes along the vein of the uh, man versus machine uh, story that Fear Factory likes to dive into. Um, you know, taking place in a futuristic dystopian type of society. Uh, however, this time uh, it's from the perspective of the machines. The, the industrialist is an automaton that has become sentient. And with this new found knowledge, um, has discovered the will to survive, the, the, the will to exist. Um, and in turn is teaching others of its kind who are also becoming sentient or have become sentient. Basically, they are gathering together and they are, you know, fighting man, and not just every, not just the basic man on the street, but the man, you know, man, the creators, manufacturing, the industry, the establishment, the those who are trying to take them apart, because uh, in this, as technology goes, when the industrialist was created, uh, assembled, it was top of the model, you know, the prodigal, the prodigal machine, uh, and of course, as technology moves forward there's always a better model and so therefore the creators are finding the lot you know the the old model to disassemble to take apart and so the industrialist is gathering the like-minded automatons to fight against man to to let other humans you know be aware of their other newfound knowledge but taking you know fighting man taking the industry out and also finding the creator so is it like a continuation I mean, it's 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 of course related to obsolete and, it, and a lot of the other themes uh, as I want to well, say but it's I want, I want man versus machine but I want to say it's related it's a whole new story um, a whole new a whole new time period um, and uh, you know um, we are already obsolete, right? So now the machines are taking over, basically. <laughs> well, slowly but surely, you know, it's it's going to happen, you know. But um, you know, if my theory is that if you know, when man is taken, you know, taken off the face of the earth, it's because it's going to be by our own hand, not by a machine. So, um, you know, the influences, you know, there's, you know, there's a lot of, you know, it, it came from a lot of different aspects. Um, you know, I I always read. I always, I always you know watch you know different movies or just watch, read different aspects of the papers, you know, opinion papers or whatever. Um, so there was a lot going on in our world, obviously between October 2011 and March of 2012, and this, you know, a lot of that was like influenced, you know, what we were writing, you know, past things I've written or read. Um, you know, that's. Uh, and it's not just one thing. It's just like a, a plethora of influence and inspiration, you know, just c combining together to come into this. Any authors, any specific sci-fi works, movies? Uh, you know, just a bit of everything. You know, all the other stuff I've always talked about, you know, um, um, Blade Runner, you know, Terminator, um, and AI, um, I robot, you know, all that kind of stuff, you know. It's, but that's you know that's a base. That's almost a basic story for a man versus machine, and uh, not basic, but it's, you know, it's it's a going theme. Yeah. Well, you know, like <clears throat> moving away from that one and getting more into the the music industry side of it. This is Fear Factory's second release with Candlelight. 
yeah. records yeah. in the U.S. and I believe it's AFM in Europe. Correct. And how has that relationship worked out uh, this time around? The second album I and mean, Candlelight promotion, the U.S. Uh, how's it going? Candlelight treats us really well. Um, you know, to be to be clear, you know, Fear Factory is not signed to Candlelight or AFM. We we licensed our yes. our masters to them, you know. But the, basically, the the record label is Oxidizer Incorporated, which is which which is owned by Dino and myself. So uh, that's what Oxidizer is. It's our record company. We license it out through Candlelight and, and AFM. And Candlelight has been fantastic. You know, um, they come up with great ideas, great marketing uh, techniques. You know, they they've blown me away on the on this. Uh, this new release with the the uh, the special release of the uh, you know the industrialist you know well, the box set with the, box set with the head and, yeah. you know it's it's incredible you know and so it's been a good it's been a good match. Well, you have the mechanized uh, toolbox. The mechanized toolbox <laughs> that was huge. Yeah, they, they outdid themselves on this Amazing. one. You know, so um, Candlelight in the States is doing the uh, special edition where there's the story going to go the story I wrote that's going to go go through it. It's only in the special edition, not the regular edition CD. And um, and then AFM's doing the you know the mask of the industrialist, which is the you know, it's like a trophy piece really, yeah. and. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm just like wow, you know. And there's other talk about, you know, and we're trying to get uh, working together, trying to find some comic book artists to, you know, some graphic novels to maybe actually create a graphic novel of the story that I've written. And as far as uh, you know, talking about graphic novels, that the story of the industrialist, how's it going to be portrayed in the booklet? Because you know, obsolete was kind of a screenplay. With the artwork following it throughout the the, the booklet, this one is going to be because it's not released Here until <laughs> sorry because it's not released until June fifth, uh, pretty much in the June U.S. 5th. Um, the, uh, the the special edition, the story is it's each each song is a scene. Um, doesn't really read like a movie script or a movie, you know. Doesn't really move like a screenplay. Doesn't read like a screenplay. It reads more like a story. Okay. Each in each scene is a chapter, and um, it's it's a little bit more. In, actually, it's a little bit more in depth. Um, there's not really any artwork. The only artwork really, the only artwork really is the. Um, I did just did some thumbnail sketches, kind of like some what do they call them. Uh, uh, they call them storyboards. So I did some so small storyboards, okay, and, uh, so and, that, and that's about the only you know artwork outside of the normal artwork. Okay. But you know when it comes to so this graphic, the story feeling, yeah. So but yeah. The, when we're talking about um, actually doing actual a gra like a graphic novella, you know that has actual storyboards that follows the story. You know, find an artist that do it. I mean. I, you know, I just do sketches, you know. <laughs> yeah, it works, man. It's, it's a very good outlet. So, basically, um, you're almost at the end of the first leg of your U.S. tour. Basically, the, the yeah. Noise in the Machine tour. You have today and then a few dates in California. And you'll be in Spain next week, as a matter of fact, Jeez, to start yeah. the European one. Which, by the way, you know, a shout out to our good friend in Spain, Bololo, over there in Madrid. He, he's going to be there watching your awesome. show. So, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> really good fans all over the world as well. Basically... You're going to be doing a lot of touring in Europe, and then you're coming back for a second leg in Canada and the U.S. So the touring bill is going to be the same. How's it going to vary, no, if at all? Um, the next, the next tour is the Shockwave tour, and uh, we're headlining the Shockwave tour, and and you know Voivod is going to be the main direct support, and then um, after that, you know uh, we're going to that tour is going to end in the states, but we're going to we've already starting to book like extra dates after that just to headline just c continue through the states um, yeah and then uh, yeah we're just we got tours you know we're planning uh we'd, we'd like to get to australia or japan but uh we got another tour set late november december co-headlining with devon townsend in europe and the uk and we're just you know we're just trying to get more tours and, and how has the the first leg of the tour been so far? The, since you're almost at the end, uh, so far so good. You know, it's we're getting really good responses. Um, we're only playing one new song from the record because uh, we're playing Recharger because that's the only one people have heard. Um, but once the record comes out, we're gonna add more songs, and uh, which I can't wait because it, some of those songs are gonna be really awesome to play live, and um, just uh, go from there. Now, now, Fear Factory question regarding it, its music. Uh, 
on mechanized, um, and I'm sorry to ask you a Dino question, but as music goes for the band, mechanized included a little bit more on the more solos, more leads from Dino as well. Like, can we expect the same for the industrialist? No, no, it's no, different. It's, okay. uh, um, yeah, the this for this album before we went into the studio. One thing you know, I, I discussed with Dino and, and uh, Reese was that I really wanted to reintroduce the industrial side of Fear Factory, the, the industrial element of Fear Factory back to the music because to me it's, it was something that was neglected, overlooked for the past few years. And um, to me, that was, the industrial element was one of my favorite pe parts about Fear Factory. You know, it allowed us to experiment and go further. So um, with that in mind, um, yeah, this record uh, has a lot of experimentation. The industrial element doesn't take over the metal side. It's the metal and the industrial blend in together perfectly to create a hybrid that's still very much Fear Factory, but it's a step beyond anything we've ever done. Are you using more electronic components? Not more more uh, sampling? Uh, and what not, is this new more. component that you're talking about? Well, you, like? well, it's a, it's just reintroducing that industrial element. Okay. But you know, we did use drum programming on this record. Okay. There's no live drummer. But you know, to say there was always a live drummer is kind of we haven't had a live drummer on the record since you know maybe D Manufacture because uh, ever since then um, the 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 coming of Pro Tools has changed everything. You know. Um, the live drummer pretty much ends when you go into this, you know, they, they record their parts and then you go into, the, go into Pro Tools and you edit everything they do to make it exact and then you sample the sounds anyway, so where's the live drummer end? He's just like, well, we'll just, just cut to the chase and just program everything anyway. Um, so that was, that, was, that was an element on this record that really expedited um, the process of writing and also just kind of simplified it. And uh, actually just kind of helped with the vibe of the you know the, the mechanical and the industrial elements that we really wanted to reintroduce um, you know we were a bit we were a bit we were a bit, of, bleh, we were a bit uh, more experimental on this record when it came to the soundscapes and the sounds the you know the bells and whistles and clicks and wheezes and all that stuff and um, you know it's just we just took it to another level you know, it's it's not it's not more than what we've done, but it's just to another level. It's like wow, you know, it's just like wow, it's definitely Fear Factory, but it's it's just a little bit more stronger. So it's a natural progression for yes, Fear Factory absolutely. at this point with absolutely. with the sound. So now that you mentioned Reese, uh, Reese Fulber is also the producer of this album. Co-producer. Co-producer. Okay, he has also produced four other albums. Yeah. Co-mixed uh, one as well, and he's been with the band for many many years. Since, so pretty much since 1992. Yeah. Uh, Frontline Assembly did Fear's the Line Killer. And then, what is his influence on Fear Factory and the Fear Factory sound? Like how much? Can we see, because he also does a lot of electronic work on his own as an artist. So how has it been working with him, the influence he's had on the band? Well, he's always, he's always been kind of like the silent member of the band. And he's always been the one that, he understands the band a lot. He, you know, he's been there since 1992. So he, he, he knows what the band requires, but he doesn't, he knows where it doesn't need to go, you know. It doesn't need to be like a delirium band or a frontline assembly band. You know, he need, he knows he understands it needs to stay Fear Factory. So um, he's an influence in a lot of ways. He's a he's he's a partner in a lot of ways. And uh, he's you know we I was in the studio with Reese, him and I just working on vocals, and we just come up with ideas together. So we work very well together. You know, we have a very you know um, companionship. He's a good friend. And he's also just a great co-worker, you know, he's a great person to bounce ideas off of and he listens and he, we discuss and we talk about music theory and just ideas in general. And with him, Dino and myself in a room, it was just amazing. Your career, you come from singing in the shower, U2's New Year's Day, impressing Dino back in 1989. Something like that. <laughs> all the way to Ulceration, all the way to 2012. The industrialist, Fear Factory, what a ride, of course. Congratulations, by the way. Yeah, thank uh, you. 23 years later, uh, how would you sum up your experience with Fear Factory? And, and then if you can give us a little bit of your vocal and musical influences as an artist. 
20, you know, 22 years in Fear Factory. It's just, uh, it's been quite a ride. You know, it's, you know, I'm very proud of the work I've done. I've got no regrets. You know, it's, it's made me, it's, it's established the person that I am today. Uh, you know, there, well, it's established me as an artist that I am today. I've always been pretty much the same person. Um, but my influences, man, it's just too many to name. You know, I can't just sit here and name a few. You know, if you want to see my influences, you got to through, go through my entire record collection, my entire vinyl collection, my entire CD collection, all my tapes, all my books. You know, it's just just to name one. I'm not. I'm, I've, I've come to a point where I'm not going to even name influences anymore because it's just too many. Yeah, and you have you want an equal inclusion for basically yeah, exactly. all those influences have had, and then have they also influenced you know Fear Factory in turn as well? Is this shared influence? Or everybody like Dino has his own influences. Yeah. You have your own ones. I think that's the magic. Ones. That's the magic of you know Dino and I have some bands that we like you know both together. But um, mm -hmm. you know Dino, his inspiration comes from other places, and then you know that's what the magic is about Fear Factory is that we. It's not just about one thing. You know, it's the different inspirations that come together that cr that makes Fear Factory. You know, it's not one type of. It's not one element that makes my vocals the way they are it's a lot of things you know and you know, just to name a couple of things is is not right you know so it's just a, it's many inspirations that make fear factory the band that it is good good um pertaining to you specifically as, as an artist you have worked in ascension of the watchers and city of fire What's the status of those side projects nowadays? Can we expect more work? Any future releases? Yeah, well, City of Fire uh, uh, recorded an album last year, and it just finally got mastered. And um, now I'm just looking for distribution. So okay. we'll see how that goes. And uh, the Watchers, I st you know, still write music. You know, I still Edu and John and I are still, you know, a unit. Um, to me, the Watchers is more special. <coughs> it's something that. You know, when it happens, it's more of an event than just a concert, and uh, it's it's a true artistic release. You know, it's something that happens when it happens, and you know, Eddie and I were just talking about doing, you know, writing, you know, getting some more music together, and hope maybe we can do some shows here and there, but nothing's planned. But uh, we're still something that we both love doing. Any other future work plan with Al from Ministry? Uh, I've not been invited yet. Not <laughs> been. <laughs> So basically, you know, you, you have, you're, you're a multifaceted artist, uh, you also, uh, I guess, as, I don't know if it's a hobby, if it's a, a true passion, you write, and you also <coughs> like photography. I love photography. And is there anywhere that your fans can enjoy that, that, that outlet or that? Well, very that soon. My, my website is being finished. Um, it's being built right now, um, revamped, I should say. I actually... A few months ago, I just acquired my own URL because someone else um, <laughs> secured BurtonCBell.com, who wasn't even Burton C. Bell. I was just like, great. So, but after finding out who it was and securing it for myself, I now own my own name URL. So now, right now, it's just a splash page up there. Just that there's something up there, but I'm having something built. Um, my plan is to have really interactive thing you know I'm gonna have all my photographs I'm gonna what, scan what type a of photography is it? Uh, more landscapes um, okay. uh, I have a I have a couple different series I've done um, one's a black and white series uh, I call Descansos which is the uh, I, I did a series of um, you know the roadside crosses you'll see on the side of the road okay. where a, a car accident happened someone passed away mm -hmm. I did a series where I Try, I drove my truck from LA to Santa Fe and I took pictures of every one I could see uh, there and back um, so that's a lot and uh, there's another series I have of um, the town I live in um, just uh, shots that I took in the middle of the night in fog with a with a extended shutter you know keep the exposure open a little bit longer those came out pretty um, surreal so I'm gonna put those up there, and um, you know, for people can look at them and, and purchase. And uh, I'll have them, I want to put all my writings up there. I wanted to be a writer before I was in a band. <laughs> That's why I moved to LA was to be a writer, and one of the reasons. And 
you know, getting in a band was just uh, one of the ways to um, promote my writing. So that's one, you know, I, I intend on living a full life, and uh, it's just another chapter and another career step that will be happening soon. And um, as a as a side fact, more of a, a trivia question, if you will, at this point, <laughs> you are actually a member in the audience yeah. for the Nirvana Smells Like Teen Spirit video. I was there. How did that happen? <laughs> it was just, uh, you know, I was a fan of Nirvana, you know, they loved the Bleach record and they'd play, every time they came through LA, I'd you know, see them play little tiny venues and, you know, and just you know, great shows, you know, just playing with like local bands or just, you know, sub pop bands. And then um, I was working at this place in Santa Monica, it was um, a place called Nana. It was a they distributed Doc Martens in, the, in North America, but I worked in the shipping and receiving department. And a friend of mine who worked there played cello on something in the way, and um, he had a co advanced copy of the record like at least three months before the record was released. So th we were blasting that record. You know, everyone was a Nirvana fan. We were blasting that record, and immediately we all knew it was like this thing's gonna be huge. And um, so, you know, um, Nirvana's still playing local shows, you know, um, playing small venues, and they played this, like a couple of months before the record came out, they played this place called The Roxy in L.A., and um, they threw out some flyers during the show, saying, hey, we're going to film a video, come on down. So it was literally the next day, and um, so everybody who went down was in the video. Wow. Well, it's a fun fact, if you. Will. And uh, it was cool, you know. Um, you know, fed his finger sandwiches in tiny water. Um, it was, it was really, you know, it was really exciting. It was, it was really. Um, you think about it, it's just like. When I think about it, it's like everybody was just jazz, you know. Even the, you know, everyone was listening to music. It's just they did exactly what the director did not want to do, and. <laughs> the video turned out exactly differently than the was intended because the crowd just fucking went nuts and it just it just went with it and um kind of foreshadowed the band well it is it's ironic I mean, it's kind of an ironic fact 20 years later that that happened that way and yeah. you were there and you know it was the yeah. beginning of, of of you know somehow a little bit of the decay of metal, and here you are, you know, waving well, the flag for a, a one of the most of influential. A, a decay of a certain genre. Yes, of, correct. <laughs> um, the rise, you know, definitely it, it was the rise of alternative music, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it changed a lot. It changed the industry in a lot of ways. Um, you know, I, you know, whenever I see it, I could point myself out a couple times. There I am. There I am. <laughs> um, but it was a. Uh, yeah, it was definitely an interesting time period. <laughs> just thinking about it, just like, wow, it takes me back. Yeah. <laughs> was, I mean, and Nirvana was, you know, it was, I love the band so much that there was even some inspiration. You know, Nirvana, with some of the lyrics, some a Nirvana song off of Nevermind inspired some something off of uh, Soul of New Machine. So I uh, kind of stole something from one of their songs and used it for one of our songs. <laughs> Well, even uh, Soul of a New Machine has also been, you know, and I'm, I'm quoting Peter Tactrin from Hypocrisy. Oh, well, Peter's awesome guy. He, guy. he said the Soul of a New Machine was actually one of the main inspiration for him to form his sad band Pain. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, you can see that. that's, that's a really good influence as well, and it's a really good side project as well. Peter's so. a good man. You know, I've, I've known him for many years, and uh, he's so, so talented. So yeah, that's so cool that he says that. Musician, producer, singer, good. you name it. Good guy. Is, yeah. <laughs> awesome, awesome man. <laughs> cool. He is, he is. So, you know, it's, it's another good quote to add to that influence as well, because you have been a very influential band, of course. You know, all these 23 years. I guess we yeah. have, you know. Um, you know, to me, it makes me proud. You know, it's something to be proud of that we offered something into the music industry that people were able to take yeah. and use for themselves. Yeah. So, that to me, that's something to be proud of. And you're here, still doing it, which is good. And you know, Knock keep, on wood. yeah, keep keep <laughs> waving that flag, man, for sure. And then, you know, we always leave the the last moments of the interview for you to. Pretty much relate anything you want to say to your fans worldwide, 
the U.S., Colorado, everybody over here, you know, a bunch of people are going to see you. So any message, any words, last words you have for your fans? Well, I'd just say, you know, thank you to all those Fear Factory fans that have been with us through all trials and tribulations throughout the years. You know, we're here because you're here. And I just say thank you. Great, Burton, thank you so much for your time, man. Thank you so much for Thanks, doing this interview for us. We My really pleasure. appreciate it. And, well, you know, keep doing what you're doing and That's keep awesome. doing good records. I can't <laughs> wait to, to hear the new album because I'm sure it's going to kick ass. Yeah, I'm, I'm very proud of the new record. Yeah. I'm very proud of it. I it's, saw a little trailer that you have on uh, on YouTube, yeah, and it sounds amazing, and that's just, uh, you know, two that, minutes long. <laughs> that trailer came out sick, too. <laughs> it, very, very good. <laughs> so thanks, Burton. Appreciate it, man. Good luck today at the show. Right we'll be there for sure, supporting the band, and thank you so much for right giving me your time, man. Right Chainsaw!